Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be copying books, praying at the chapel, and sending out our novice to do good deeds in Biblios, Quill, and Parchment. This game is a roll and write style game. You roll a handful of dice, you have a couple of re-rolls, and then you utilize whatever you got on the dice to move up on certain tracks, to achieve specific things, to try to get the most victory points. Like I said in the intro, you, you know, you're know you going to be copying books, you're moving up those tracks, sending your novice around this town and following different paths. You are going to the chapel and moving up on a track that way. So you're achieving a few different things, but then halfway through the game, the game is going to change, much like Biblios did before. Biblios was a card game in which the first half of the game was you drafting cards, and the second half of the game was you bidding on a secondary stack of cards. Well, in this one, you're sort of doing a similar thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at it, and I'll see you on the other side. In the game, there's going to be a central board over here, and then every player has their own board, as you see right there. Everybody also gets these six dice. Now, both of these are double-sided. I'm only going to explain side A, but there are quite a few differences on both sides. Different bonuses, uh, different uh, movement over here for the novice you send out to walk around the uh, area. Just different sort of, you know, a, a different uh, tweaking of a few different powers, all right? So, the game is going to take place over eight rounds, eight days. And at the end of the eight days, whoever has the highest score written up here from a few different things is going to be the winner of the game. You are going to get points over here from collecting, which is what you're doing is basically uh, trans you know, uh, transcribing these books or writing down these books, traducing them. So you've, you're going to get victory points from that based on the values of these dice over here. That would go down there. You're going to get victory points from the chapel, how high up you got on this track. You get victory points from uh, this cross, filling in spots on that cross and then multiplying that times two. Leftover influence over here divided by four. You're gonna get points from that. Your uh, novice that you're sending out to to walk around for every city they visit, they're gonna get some points. And then for bonuses in these books, if you complete a stack, you get the highest remaining bonus in that stack. All right. So here's how it works. Again, two halves, four rounds in in phase one, four rounds in phase two. Let me explain phase one. The first thing, everybody rolls their dice, and then. You get two re-rolls if you want them. And you're supposed to put out your hand, everybody looks around, you put out your hand and you count to three, and then you either re-roll all the dice, re-roll one die, or don't re-roll at all. And once you've done that twice more after the original roll, you are done. So I might look at this and go, um, I'm going to, you know, I could, let's say this was the final roll, okay, just for the sake of simplicity here. Once that's done, we're all going to use these dice to mark on our player boards various things. Influence. Very easy. We add up these two dice and we're going to put the total right here in day one. So that's done. And then we go to these, which are the different books. So I would fill in two of these books, two blue, so I could cross those out, and one of these in gray. And they, of course, have different names, astrology and herbal books and what have you. And then this one lets you move around. This is a little bit hard to see, but there is a character right there who is beginning to move around town, and they have two different ways to go. They can go begin that way, or they could begin into here that way. So since I have two steps, let's say I want to take this path, I could go one, two. There are a few different symbols on the board which give you bonus books. There are question marks, which mean you roll a die and get whatever you get. And then there are three cities or, you know, towns, what have you, those give you victory points. If you visit all three, you get ten, two of them five, a single one, two victory points. Great. Once we've all done that, then we go to the third phase, which is visiting the chapel. The chapel is one of the faces on these dice. There's only five kinds of books, so the final face on the die is the chapel. So those would just be set aside. And when we go to the chapel, that we move up on here trying to get higher up. This is going to give you victory points if you, as you pass specific thresholds. It's also going to allow you to break ties if you're higher up on the board here. At the very beginning of the game, the thing we're supposed to do for setup is put your symbol 
which is here, it's a circle or a square or a triangle, which is supposed to be a hat. Those go down here. So let's say it's me there and there's a triangle and then a square there. It's a three player game, okay? So let's say um, uh, this player here, the one being played, you know, the, the one that's a square, had one of these. Well, they go to the next level, but they always also fall in. You get closer to the inside edge because the tiebreaker and the way you decide who's higher up on this is first who's higher up, simply, but then also who is closer to the inside, okay? So now if I moved up as the circle, I go here. And then if I moved up again, well, I would go there. And now I'm, I'm guaranteeing at least one victory point from that, all right? And this continues again, like I said, for four rounds. Once that's done, we go to the second half of the game. So let's say I, I do want to explain one thing now for the second round. If I roll these and I got, let's say, 11 there, then I write 11 here for the second round, and then I make sure I just track the total in the next spot. And now after the third round, I'll track my total and so on, okay? Okay, now the last four rounds. Well, we no longer have these dice. And now instead what we're going to do is prepare this area right here with pools of dice, all right? We are going to roll for the top one. We are going to need this die and this and this. So we would roll that. We would place them in the appropriate spot, like so. And then the next one would be this one. And then the next one would get, again, dice rolled into it and prepared there and so on, like so. Now there'll be one more down there, I'm not gonna bother with it. We're all going to secretly bid. You cover up your board and you write a number in the next spot. So let's say, uh, you know, I gained in this one, I only got a total of four, brought me to 22. And then in the last one I got uh, eight and it brought me to 30. Now in here, I'm going to bid an amount. Let's say I bid six which means once I'm done, I'll be down to 24. And six got me second place, because somebody else bid eight. Well, the person who bid eight is going to select one of these lines and they're going to apply that line. And then I'll go if I'm second place. I'll take one of the remaining ones and utilize those. The books are the same. Chapel, same. You'll go over here in third step. These will behave the same way, allowing you to move your uh, novice around town. One of the faces, by the way, does have a little starburst symbol that lets you mark off one of these starburst symbols and mark a book in that space, but you can never do that one again with that symbol. And then finally, this die over here lets you modify the worth of these different kinds of books. So this one lets you tick, tick one up by one. There's also, uh, there's uh, most of the faces are that. There's uh, three of them that are that. There's one face that's a double tick, you can spread them to two dice or give it to the same one, and then one of them that's going to let you tick one up and one down, okay? So that's the next thing. And then we re-roll that and do it again, and then we do it again. After four rounds of that, the game is over. It's very easy to track because this will, you know, fill in and then you're done. And then we do final scoring. So let's say they had ticked up green to three with that. And uh, somebody later on uh, took blue up to five and gray down to two. You know, that's all going to change. Then we do the final scoring in which we compare the uh, books here. Let's say, you know, I got all the way up to, let's say I got all the way up to the top with gray and I was the first one to do it. So I'm going to get five points there. And then maybe I, you know, I did it in pink also and I was the second one to do it. So I got three points, right? Well, then you're going to check on these. So first we'll do the blue books here. Who's got the most of them? That person's going to get the number on the die times three. So we'll get 15 points. And then the second place gets five times two. And then let's say I was third. I'm going to get uh, times one only. So I'm going to get five points for this one. And then in gray, I had the lead in that, let's say. I have the most books. If there is a tie because two people completed them all, by the way, then we check this number right here. Uh, I have the most. It's two points times three. I'm going to get six for that. If I had gotten it up a little bit more, of course, I would have gotten more victory points. And so you do that for all of them. Write your final score right here. 
add up all this, and your final score then will go in here. And whoever has the highest score is, of course, the winner of the game. So there you go. That's how the game works. Again, there's uh, two sides to all these. So you can play uh, slightly different games along the way, you know, every, every time you set this up and play. And there's also a two-player mode in which you will roll some dice for basically a dummy third player. And it, it's fine. It basically stays out of the way pretty pretty well. So let's go and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of this little game. I know there was a Biblios Dice game before. I think just called Biblios Dice, which I never played. But I am a fan of Biblios. I, I enjoyed Biblios. I, I think it's a solid card game. I was very pleasantly surprised by this. I mean, I was excited to play because I do like Biblios. But I have to say, this manages to both feel like Biblios and yet inject things I wasn't expecting to find in there. The game is, uh, is engaging, is interesting, it's very short. There's a nice amount going on in the game, so I really do enjoy this one. Let's talk about it. We're going to start at the top with theme and setting. You know what? It's pretty good. I, I'm not sure I would say the same thing about the original Biblios. I thought that that game, the, the theme and the setting were both quite dry, but it also wasn't coming through as much in, in the mechanisms and what you were doing in the game. In this one, it does a little bit more. Copying the books, but then also sending your novice around town to do good deeds. That, that comes across. You know, the, the piety and moving up on uh, the uh, the chapel. And that's technically you're scoring piety points. Uh, so that whole thing it really does work. And so I find this to be a pretty good match for the game as far as the theme goes. And what you are doing in it is going to fall into place. Is going to allow you to teach the game more effectively. And just give you a pretty good foundation for what you're doing in the game. The aesthetics take a little bit of a hit for me. I think the dice here are lovely. These are very nice wooden dice. They're well printed. They roll well. I have no problem with these. I do, however, think these boards, these laminated boards, are a little thin. And in fact, after just one game, they started to show some of the marks. They would wipe clean, certainly, but you could see where the... Uh, the dry erase marker had kind of been, you know, pushed into it. So it leaves behind some markings. I wish they were a little thicker. I wish they were a little more sturdy, these. So that's the main thing. As far as the artwork goes, eh, you know, it's it's fine. I don't love it, but I also don't find it uh, problematic. And then I also wish this was slightly bigger. I know it doesn't really, it wouldn't fit in the box if it was bigger than this. But if this was double si if this was a double sized thing with a fold in the middle, you can fold out a bigger board, or maybe just have this across two different, uh, you know, of these laminated sheets, because it gets real cramped during the second stage in the game, where you're supposed to be drafting dice from here. It just it, it becomes a little smushed. So that's it. Replay value, man. There's a lot of replay value in this. There are two sides to both of these. Okay. And then two sides to both of these. And these are interchangeable. You can play with A side on this, but B side on this one. Uh, the player count goes down to two. There's a solo mode. There, uh, There's a lot going on. This one also comes with, we happen to have in here, I don't, I don't know if this comes with all of them, but there's this little deck of chapel cards, which is a small variant. Very nice. So I think the replayability here is, is very nice. Plus it's a lot to think about, really. You can try to, you know, sort of target different things and the game will play out differently. So, kudos right there. <clears throat> game mark, very good. Those two halves feel distinct. Uh, they're very quick. The game moves along at a nice clip. Uh, the only... This is kind of somewhere between game mark and ease of play. I think the whole one, two, three, I'm going to re-roll them all, I'm going to re-roll one thing is a little annoying. If you're playing at the level where you need it, and by that I mean you're paying attention to what everyone, ju everyone just rolled, you're keeping track of what everyone is collecting, you're looking at your own dice and going, I'm going to re-roll away from that green because I don't really need it, or I'm going to re-roll away from the red because I want more blue so I can catch you, then yes, but um, 
You can also just, if it's your first play, just don't look at everybody else's dice and give yourself an original roll and then two re-rolls of a single die or all the dice, and then you're done. That also works, okay? But the game's game arc is, is good. It's, it's, I had no issues with it. Ease of play. It's smooth. It's well put together. It flows nicely. Good rule book, so no issues there. Well structured. Um, I think it's an easy game to play. There's actually, funny enough, more rules in this game than there are in Biblios, the original game. I think a, a good chunk of that is to have it feel like Biblios, but it achieves that. And... And goes above and beyond it, so no problems there. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. You're definitely going to feel like you have choices in this game. Yes, there's dice and dice rolling and re-rolls to mitigate that. But there are plenty of moments, especially during that second half, where you're going to be looking around, thinking, strategizing, you know, reacting to what folks around the table are doing. So... I think there's a good amount here, a good combination of all three of these things. Tactics, reactionary things you're doing, luck you have to contend with, but then strategy. You know, are you going to try to get one of those dice to have a really high value and then make sure you win that one, right? If you get something up to six and you're scoring that times three, that's 18 points right there. So that could be a big part of your points. You know, the, the scores are around 50 to 60. So... That's pretty good. Yeah, there's lots to think about. I did enjoy the way that played out. So, I have to say, I really enjoyed Quill and Parchment here. I think it's a solid game. I would definitely recommend it. Now, it's in a crowded genre, yes. There's a lot of roll and rights, and there are a lot of them that feel in many ways similar to this. A few little areas that you affect usually by moving up on tracks in those areas, right? There's a lot of those. I get that. But you know what? This is a pretty good one in that space. So if you're looking for one of those, if the overview looked good to you, you should probably think about picking this one up. Biblios Quill and Parchment gets a strong 8 out of 10 from me. That is a seal of approval, folks, and I recommend it. So that's going to do it. Go check it out. Uh, my name is Z Garcia, everybody. Thanks very much for hanging out with me and watching the video. I'm going to see you on the next one.